Well, a very good morning to you. Uh, please do come and grab a seat if you haven't done so already. It is great to welcome you to Holy Trinity Church this morning on a wonderful sunny morning. Uh, my name's Chris and I'm the minister here. It's brilliant to have you with us this morning if it's, if it's your first time, if you're visiting us uh, from elsewhere, or of course if it's your 500th time, you're also very welcome. Uh, whether you're joining us online or here in the building, it is a great privilege to be together, young and old, coming together this morning to worship the King of the universe, Jesus Christ, and to learn what it means to live life with him and to live life for him. Now, one of the pictures that the Bible uses to talk about the church and to describe it is a body uh, where each and every part 
is essential. Every part is important. Every part has something important to contribute. Uh, so if you're here with little ones this morning, I just want to encourage you. We love to have them in with us. Uh, they're a really important part of our church family. And we don't mind if there's a bit of uh, noise, if there's a bit of movement or running around this morning as, in the middle of the service. That is all part and parcel over these summer months as we have all age services together. Uh, we're all really welcome. We don't mind any of that at all. Now, we're going to be carrying on our little mini-series in Luke's Gospel, going through some of the parables in Luke's Gospel. Uh, And they're special stories that Jesus told to help us understand something complicated uh, by telling a story that helps us to grasp something more of who he is and what he came to do. But if we're going to really be able to understand more of the God of the universe this morning, we're going to need his help, aren't we? So let me pray uh, and ask him to help us now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are a God who gathers us as your people. Thank you that you're a God who speaks to us in your word. And we pray this morning that you would help each of us to learn something more of you. Lord, by your spirit, would you be transforming us, changing us, and making us more like the Lord Jesus. Lord, please help us to have ears that are ready to hear and eyes that are ready to see the great truths that there are in your word this morning. And we pray that you'll be filling us with joy and hope as we encounter your son, the Lord Jesus. For your name's sake, we pray. Amen. Brilliant. Well, God is so much bigger than us, isn't he? He's holy, he's wise, he's almighty. He needs nothing, and yet he comes to us and he makes himself known. And so the invitation of our first song is to come and worship him. Let's stand and let's uh, worship him with our hearts poured out to him in praise. Model invisible, clothed in light in excessive blood, God most holy, God only wise, God most blessed, most glorious, God almighty, victorious, present with us yet fed from sight. Here's the Lord, here's the Lord, holy, and our praise will rise to the Lord of life. Come and worship Him in His majesty, awesome God most high, giving life to both great. He's the source and the life of all, needing nothing to make him whole. Man does flourish, then fade to north, like a breath that is quickly gone. But our God's the eternal one. Holy. Awesome God most high, see his glory shine over all mankind. I will worship him in his majesty, awesome God most high. God of splendor we see in part. But through Christ he has come to us, wondrous glory has won our hearts. Holy as the Lord. Awesome God. 
have a seat. Now the uh, God we've just been singing about is the God we worship here at Holy Trinity. He is immortal, which means he was there before time itself even began, and he'll be there uh, for eternity to come. He's the creator of everything. He's the God revealed in Jesus Christ, Uh, the same God worshipped by millions of Christians around the world and throughout history. And it's so helpful to remember that and to remind one another about who he is and what it is that we believe as Christians. And that's what we're going to do now uh, as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's an ancient statement of faith. And uh, I'd invite you, if you know the Lord Jesus this morning as your Saviour and King, to join in with saying these words together from the screen. If you're not yet a Christian, you might just want to listen in uh, and uh, think about what it is uh, that the Bible says uh, about the God of the universe. So we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brilliant. Well, we can only uh, confess those things and say those things uh, because we truly have a king who reigns in power, King Jesus. And we're going to sing two songs now that invite us to uh, remember his saving power, uh, but also remember that he's uh, a king who uh, is so compassionate and loving that he says, come to me, no matter who you are or what you've done, I have all that you need and I can save uh, even Uh, the worst of sinners. So we're going to sing two songs, Jesus is the King and Jesus uh, Strong and Kind. And there are some actions that go with both of these songs. I'm going to invite Jenny uh, and Samuel and Emily to come and help lead us. If there's any other little ones you'd like to come and help them uh, as we sing these two songs, do feel free to come up as well. And let's stand and uh, let's sing together. Jesus is the King Ruler over everything Jesus is the one Promise from the Son of God Jesus is the Lord He's the one you can't ignore Jesus Jesus He is the King He is the King He commanded the fishermen Hey! Come follow me And they did and they did, and they did, because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promise from the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King, He is the King. He commanded the wind and waves. Hey. Be still, be still, and they did, and they did, and they did, because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything, Jesus is the one, promise from the Son of God, Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore, Jesus, Jesus, He is the King, He is the King. He promised that three days after death He'd rise again And He did And He did And He did Because Jesus is the King Ruler over everything Jesus is the one Promise from the Son of God Jesus is the Lord He's the one you can't ignore Jesus Jesus He is the King 
He is the King. He is the King. Jesus said that if I I should come to Him. No one else can satisfy. I should come to Him. Jesus said, if I am weak, I should come to Him. No one else can be my strength, I should come to Him. For the Lord is good and faithful, He will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said that if I fear, I should come to Him. No one else can be my shield, I should come to Him. For the Lord is good and faithful, He will keep me day and night. We can always run to, to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said, if I am lost, he will come to me. Show that on the cross he will come to me. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. For the Lord. strong and kind Jesus strong and kind Friends, you have a seat and let me pray Heavenly Father, thank you that you are a God of great love and of great kindness and compassion as we hear your word now Lord, please help us to become more like you. Lord, help us to come this morning with all the burdens, all the pressures, all the challenges that we face, and to bring them to you, and knowing that you are more than able to deal with them and to deal with us. Lord, be at work changing us now, we pray, by your Spirit, for your name's sake. Amen. But we're going to hear uh, God's word from the Bible uh, as David comes to read to us uh, from Luke chapter 10. Uh, and then Matt is going to bring us the first part of our talk. Thank you. Good morning. And the reading is on page 733 of the, uh, of the, the chair Bibles. Page 733, and it's Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 25. Luke 
chapter 10, beginning at verse 25. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? The man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Here ends the reading. Uh, thanks. Oh, can you turn me down a bit, please? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks, David. Um, and please keep that passage open, if you can do. Um, and uh, do you ever feel like you're missing something? Maybe you're asking questions, and however many you ask, you don't seem to get any closer to the answer. Um, maybe you've paid 20 questions and you've found out that you're looking for someone real, Scottish, tall, very tall, famous. You've no idea what famous is for, though, and you can't find out anything about it. Old, but he hasn't died. And apparently wasn't born either. He's a bit white on top or bald, you're not really sure. And you just can't figure out what's going on. And eventually it turns out that what you were looking for was Ben Nevis. What you hadn't realised was that he's not a person. And, well, the, teach, the expert in the law, has, in our passage today, has a similar problem. We don't know his name, but he comes up to Jesus and he's asking him a couple of questions. The issue is, in many ways, he just has the wrong end of the stick. And it means that he's asking the wrong questions. So as we look together now at what he's got wrong, hopefully we'll be see how we can make the same mistakes as him. And in particular, we're going to have a look at how he has love wrong and how he's got who his neighbour is wrong. So firstly, how has he got love wrong? And we're going to need some imagination here, a lot of imagination. I want you to imagine that I want to go climbing later. <laughs> this is tough. But I've got a problem, I could really do with another rope. So, it's after the service, and what am I going to do? Well, I think I'm going to have a quick wander around. Ah, oh, Pete! How are you doing, man? How are you doing? Great, great. Um, do you like sweets? Oh, I do, indeed. Oh, fantastic. Um, do you have a climbing rope by any chance? Um, no. Oh, for goodness sake. Honestly, why do I waste my time talking to that guy? It's just a complete waste of my time. Um, right, right, right. Ah, Joel! Joel, how are you? Uh, do you like sweets? I do. Oh, fantastic. So, don't suppose you have a climbing rope by any chance? Oh, it's funny, that's quite good. Uh, could I borrow it? Oh, are you sure? Um, how about. 
Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Oh, I love you, man. It's fantastic. So, who thinks that that shows love to either Pete or Ethan? Sorry, Pete or Joel. <laughs> who reckons? Anyone? But in some ways, it's what the experts of the law is doing. So he treats love as a bit like a cost-benefit analysis. So anyone that's in business, you might have done one of these. So in that situation, the benefit to me was I got a nice climbing rope to borrow for the day. The cost was a couple of bags of sweets. I mean, it could have been one, but you know, Joel drives a hard bargain. <laughs> But the expert of the law is thinking the same way. He knows what he wants. He wants eternal life. Or if you prefer, he wants to enjoy God's blessings forever. And it's a great thing to want. But the problem is he also knows that there might be a cost to it. So he's asking, how do I inherit God's eternal life? And in reply to Jesus' question, he knows what the law says he needs but it could be costly. Um, can anyone spot anything that the Samaritan, sorry, that love costs the Samaritan? Any ideas in the parable? Money. Yeah, money. So yeah, you had to pay the innkeeper. And actually, yeah, pay the innkeeper. Anything else? Time. Yeah, time. I guess the inn was out of his way. Anything else? A couple of other things. So, danger. The man had just been robbed by bandits, and that road was known for being dangerous. If he sticks around, maybe he'll get robbed too. It cost him sore feet. The robbed man got the horse. The Samaritan would have had to walk all that way. And actually, I don't know about you, but I don't much enjoy having to deal with injuries. So sort of bandaging someone up, dealing with the blood, the, anything else that might be coming out, it, it's unpleasant. So love costs. And the expert in the law rightly thinks that if he gets eternal life, all of this stuff, whatever it costs, totally worth it. It would be cheap at twice the price. But what if you don't get eternal life? It's all been a bit of a waste of time, hasn't it? So I better make sure that I love the right people the right amount. Not enough, and I miss out. Too much. I could have been doing other stuff. Now hopefully we're not quite that blatant in our love. But subconsciously, I know that I sometimes think like this. Both giving and receiving love, we can have a bit of an exchange going in our brains, saying they've done something for us, I should do something for them. Or, I've done something for them, why aren't they doing something for me? Uh, maybe you're talking to someone and think, I'm not getting much out of this conversation. Maybe I should move on. So if I've listened for five minutes, they've been talking to me about whatever they're interested in, they should really be doing it in a way that makes it interesting to me, so I can just go on. You see, here's the problem. Love isn't a cost-benefit analysis. Look at the Good Samaritan. His love didn't count the cost. <laughs> um, do you see, in verse 35, he agreed to return and pay whatever extra went on. And it's not to say that we don't need wisdom in how to manage what God has given us. None of us has limited, unlimited time, money, energy. And so we might not be able to be quite as carefree as the Samaritan is here. But even as we pray for wisdom in how to manage what God has given us, we shouldn't regret spending it in love. God loves a cheerful giver. So if love costs us money, don't dwell on the new toy or possession it could have got you. If it costs you time, don't think how you could be watching TV or chatting to your mates or playing football. Instead, think carefully about what love will cost, but then give it cheerfully. And also, love doesn't count the benefit. The Samaritan could expect nothing from helping the robbed man, 
He couldn't expect money. He'd just been robbed. I mean, the man was half dead, so I don't think he'd have been great company. And also, remember, the Jews hated the Samaritans. No Jew would have ever thought that a Samaritan could go to heaven, couldn't get eternal life. So the Samaritan couldn't even hope for that. The love the Samaritan showed didn't count the benefit or cost. It just saw someone in need and tried to meet that need. The Samaritan didn't look at the Bob man and think, is it worth it? Is it worth living him? Sorry, is it worth loving him? And to us, that shouldn't come as a surprise to us. Because this is Jesus teaching about love. God made man in his own image. And we only know what love is. Because God is love. God built, cre- built love into creation right at the fundamental level. And we can try and distort it as much as we like. But God's love tells us what love is. And spiritually speaking, we are that robbed man, far from God, helpless, but that he came to in love. Because what would have happened if God had looked at you and I and said, is it worth it? If If before God sent his only son into the world, he'd asked, is it worth it? If before Jesus went to that cross, he'd asked, is it worth it? Well, our next song puts the cost to God of loving us, who cannot pay it back, better than I ever could. So let's stand and sing, Here is Love. the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only Son to make a wretch's treasure. The pain of searing loss The Father turns his face away As wounds which mother chosen one Bring many sons to upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was a Dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this 
I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom. So, I was, am I on? Okay, cool. What incredible love to such a broken people. And what a beautiful way of seeing how God's love is so much greater. That true love is about serving others, not ourselves. And we've seen how the expert in the law got love wrong. But how did he get who his neighbour is wrong? He asked Jesus, who is my neighbour? And the problem here actually isn't that he doesn't know his neighbour is, who his neighbour is. The problem is so much bigger than that. The problem is why he's asking. And to show why, I need a volunteer. Do I have a volunteer? Is there a nice small person? There you go. <laughs> Lydia, do you want to? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay, so, yes, Sam? Uh, there we go. Uh, right. right. Hi, Sam. So, what I want you to do is take this ball. Can you hug it and get your arms all the way? No, no, I need your hands to meet the other side. No, no, right on the other... Oh, okay, fine, fine. Let's try something else. Right, can you balance that ball on this jam jar for me? <laughs> no, is it, it's a bit too big. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very big ball, isn't it? So, let's try. How about this one? Can you hug this one for me? Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's much better. Can, can you balance that one? Yeah, you balance this one. Ooh, almost. Ooh. Oh, that one isn't doing well either, is it? Oh, okay. I'll tell you what, Samuel. Let's try this one. Yeah, you can hug that. Oh, yeah, that's lovely and easy to hug, isn't it? How about... Yay! <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel. There you go. Right, so what I want you to imagine is that this ball represents the love demanded by the law in verse 27. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And to love your neighbour as yourself. And it's huge! A ball the size of this church wouldn't be big enough to represent it. And it's completely unmanageable for us. So the expert in the law looks at that and goes, that's too big. I know what, I'll shrink it. I'll make it something about this size. Something that I can nice and easily manage. He wouldn't admit it, but secretly he wants to be like the priest and Levite, able to walk past the robbed man without feeling bad about it, by, without thinking... Well, so being able to think, my love isn't really required there. The law doesn't demand love in that situation. He wants to think, my love is enough. And that's the problem with asking, who is my neighbour? It seeks to make love small. It wants to say that loving God with everything I have is turning up to church on a Sunday, having the odd quiet time, being on some rota, and saying grace after meals. And it says that when it says, love them, my neighbour, it means that isn't really my neighbour. It's, I can choose who my neighbour is. And oddly enough, it will be the people that I like loving and find really easy to love. And as myself really means as much as I want to. The expert in the law has a little voice in his head just going, did God really mean that? And we all have that voice. We all want to say, yes, we have earned eternal life, that we have fulfilled the law, and I deserve eternal life. But the issue is, it's a lie. The required love isn't this big. It's huge. It's enormous. And my love isn't enough. The, basically, the answer to the question, how do I inherit eternal life, is I can't. Nothing I do will ever earn it. But Jesus' love, the love that we just sang about, is big enough. 
his love poured out for us is big enough. So we can't inherit eternal life, but we don't need to. Because it's been earned for us by Jesus and his death on the cross and is given freely as a gift of love to all those that will receive it. So that's the issue with asking who is my neighbour. The question isn't how can I make God's love vast beyond all measure, small enough. The question is, how can I make my love, tiny as it is, bigger? How can I take God's love that has been poured out on me and pour it out on others? So from this story, the priest, the Levite, the Samaritan, they were all the robbed man's neighbours. But as Jesus asked, as the ESV puts it, which of them proved to be his neighbour? So look around at each other now. Take a good look. There is no one in this room that you could speak to that isn't your neighbour. Later, go for a walk through Gateshead. You will not meet anyone that isn't your neighbour. Go to the far ends of the earth. Still won't meet anyone that isn't your neighbour. The question isn't, who is my neighbour? How can I make love, love small? But how can, I meet, how can I love those that I meet better? How can I make my love big? And we'll fail. In this life, our love will not come close to what it ought to be. But we can always make it bigger. So some people, we find it easy to love. So take this lot, for example. Um, I find it really easy to love them. They go for bike rides with me. They're happy to talk about rugby. They introduce me to uh, Greg's Bacon Sarnis. So I find it really easy to love them. And I'm sure we can all think of people like that. They're interested in the same kind of things as us. Easy to spend time with. And don't get me wrong, it's great that we love them. It's great that we spend time with them, listen to them, help, encourage, support them. But the challenge here is how do we make our love bigger? How do we stop being satisfied with the amount of love we currently give? and try to expand it. Our love might well fail, but how this week will we try to show the love that God has shown to us, to others? So in a moment, we'll pray that God's spirit would fill our hearts with his love, to give us chances to love others this week. But if you're anything like me, I suspect the truth is, there's loads of chances. There's loads of chances to love others that we just pass over with maybe a slight feeling of discomfort, that we tell ourselves, yeah, my love wasn't really required there. And it's the same excuse the priest and Levite used. So maybe instead, could you try talking to someone different after the service? Give them your time, instead of making a beeline for, I don't know, someone to mock them about rugby results. Or maybe you could... try to love one more person at work this week or at school, especially if they seem to be in need. Can you give your time to them? Maybe it could be swallowing your pride, reaching out to someone you've had a disagreement with, whether it was your fault or theirs. Maybe you could risk rejection by sharing the news of Jesus with someone this week, be known as a Christian. Whatever it is, let us pray together now. Heavenly Father, we are made in your image, to show, made to show your love to those around us. But too often, we have love all wrong, and as a result, our love is small and weak. We seek to limit it to those we find easy to love, and resent what love costs us. This week, please help us to expand our love, to not count the cost or the benefit, to put others' needs before our own. Please give us the courage to take chances to love those we meet. And Lord, we thank you that we can do this secure in your love poured out over us. The love that means our love to others isn't to earn eternal life, but as a result of Jesus' love for us. 
that secure in a relationship to, with you, we are free to love. Amen. And now Chris is going to come and say confession together. Yes. Oh, sorry, Chris. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, there's lots to think about there, isn't there? And um, we, we're going to come to a point in our service where we're going to say sorry to God. And uh, as we've just been thinking about, I mean, Matt got us thinking about this giant ball a minute ago uh, in relation to that command to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and to love your neighbour as yourself. Now, I think if we're all honest... We, we would all struggle to get our arms around this, just like we've struggled to do those things of loving God with all that we are and loving others as we should do. So I'm going to give us a moment to just think back over the past week. What are the ways in which we have failed to love others and to love God as we should have done? And then we're going to join in uh, some words of confession. It's a response. So I'll say some words and then you all join in with the words, save us and help us. But let's just take a few moments to think about what the things are that we want to say sorry to God for now. So if we can have the words up on the screen. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. Amen. Well, Psalm 103 uh, reminds us of how great God's love is for us and how he deals with it, uh, us when we fail. He's, it says this, As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. What wonderful news to know that God has dealt with our failures and in his love he has given us that wonderful gift of eternal life through Jesus well, we're going to continue in prayer now as Kath uh, comes to lead us now we'll concentrate on being quiet and still as we come to speak to our Father God, whose love is much bigger than we can imagine. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, that he came to rescue us and make us right with you. Help us to believe in him and to remember what he's done for us, especially on the hard days when life gets tough. Lord, you call us to love one another as Jesus loves us. May we show his love to other people even when we don't think they deserve it or when it's inconvenient for us. Help us by your spirit to do that knowing that it pleases you. Amen. We bring before you our nation and pray for wisdom and decision-making over the choice of a new prime minister. We ask that whoever is chosen would lead with integrity and humility, looking to the needs of vulnerable people, especially at this time of turmoil in the world with increases in the cost of living in this country, bringing hardship and uncertainty to many. 
and we remember two areas in the world where many people are hungry and have poor water supplies, where fires have caused so much damage, and where there are wars and injustices. Have mercy on all these situations, Lord, and may we do what we can to help people in need. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for holiday times when we can relax at home and have times away. May we remember you at these times and be refreshed, knowing that we can rest in you and rely on you because you promise always to be with us. And we finish with some words from Psalm 33. We wait in hope for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love rest on us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And we bring all these prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we've been thinking about this morning, it is costly, isn't it, to love as God has loved us, uh, but it is the right response uh, to his love uh, to us. And our final song is a real an opportunity for us to say, yes, we hear your call, God, to us to go out to our world, to go out this week, uh, and to share the good news of Jesus, and to share your love wherever we go. It's called Hear the Call of the Kingdom. Let's stand uh, and let's join him. Hear the call of the kingdom, lift your hands to the king. Let his song rise within you as a fragrant offering. Of a God rich in mercy came in Christ to redeem all who trust in his unfailing grace. Hear the call of the kingdom to be children of light. brings us to uh, the end of our formal time together. Just before we go, we've got a few notices. Please do stick around for tea and coffee now. Uh, great opportunity, uh, as Matt was uh, encouraging us to do earlier, to 
uh, be getting to know one another, to be perhaps taking the opportunity to connect with people that we uh, perhaps haven't done in the past or uh, wouldn't normally do. So let's take that opportunity uh, to stick around and, and share tea and coffee together now. Uh, there are no small groups uh, running over the summer, so no home groups or revive groups. But again, I just want to encourage us to take the opportunities that there are with a, a little bit of a lighter schedule uh, over the summer months to spend time with one another, really deepening our friendships and our love uh, for one another. Uh, let's take the opportunities of those uh, perhaps freer evenings um, to, to connect with each other. Uh, as we look ahead to September, uh, there's a number of uh, things that I'd love us to be thinking about and seeing if we might be able to get involved with. Uh, our, our climbers and scramblers are looking for some uh, new toys, uh, particularly some Playmobil, Lego and Small World toys suitable for four to seven year olds. So if you've got any uh, that you're thinking about getting rid of, perhaps you'd consider giving them to church so that we can uh, bless our uh, children as they uh, head to their groups in September with some new toys. Uh, and perhaps if you've got a heart and a passion to uh, see young children growing in their love of the Lord Jesus, you'd consider getting involved in our Scramblers team. Uh, we've got a need for some more leaders. Uh, perhaps you would serve on a, a monthly basis, so uh, serving one week every month or a couple of weeks a month. Uh, you don't need any previous experience of that, uh, just a willingness to get alongside little ones uh, and share something of Jesus with them, uh, and there'll be uh, full training and uh, input given uh, if you haven't done it before. So uh, please do have a chat with me uh, if that would be something you'd be up for. Um, also, our TOTS group, uh, which is our Monday uh, mums and babies group, um, will be starting again in September. And again, we would really appreciate more leaders, people who'd be coming, willing to come along uh, on a Monday morning and help with this exciting outward-looking ministry. It's really a great opportunity to connect with our local community. Uh, it's a, an event that happens every Monday, uh, and we've got people coming in from uh, around the area uh, who don't know the Lord Jesus that we want to share um, Christ with. So if you've got a uh, f- uh, f- free Monday morning uh, that you could give to helping out with this exciting opportunity, please do have a chat with Leslie, our Women and Outreach worker, and she uh, would love to hear from you uh, on that. Uh, last thing to share with you uh, is that we'd, we've got a growth groups course coming up in September, uh, and it's a great course for equipping you to study the Bible for yourself, but also to help others uh, study the Bible uh, and lead others in, in studying it, particularly aimed at our home group leaders and our revived group leaders, but it is open to anyone. Uh, so if that's something you'd be interested in, uh, please do have a chat with me. It's running for five Sundays um, in September uh, and October. Uh, There's lots of great opportunities to try things out, to get feedback, uh, and really it's a a very practical course. So um, if you'd like to know more or you'd like to sign up, have a chat with me at the end. Uh, The last thing to say is if you're new or visiting this morning, uh, please do fill in one of our Keep In Touch cards. You'll find them on the welcome uh, desk just out there. It's a great way of us just uh, getting to know a little bit more about who you are and how we can serve you by getting information to you about what we do We'd love to help welcome you better and uh, help you connect uh, with the life of Holy Trinity. So do fill in one of those if you're new uh, or visiting with us this morning. Well, as we come to a close, let me pray uh, using uh, the words uh, of Moses as he prayed for the people of Israel in the book of Exodus. Uh, May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen.